Today I want to take a look at how we can customize our workspace in Adobe Photoshop to increase our efficiency when we're editing images. Now, Photoshop is a massive program and there's a lot of things to it that we as photographers don't necessarily need. So I wanna talk a little bit about how to remove some of the clutter, get rid of some of those things that are in front of your face all the time that you don't necessarily need. Now, Photoshop is broken up into many different panels and the panels can be seen over here on the right hand side as well as the toolbar on the left hand side and I have the timeline down here at the bottom. We have a lot of panels surrounding our photograph. Well, each one of these panels is its own little separate window you could think of. It's got its own little separate options and it does a different thing within the program. A lot of times though when people are working in Photoshop they may lose a certain panel or not know where one is. And one really useful thing to know in Photoshop is that every single panel is under the window menu at the top of the screen. So for example right now I don't see my history panel anywhere but I can go to window history and that makes it pop up just like that. So that's a pretty cool and useful little trick. So now I have my history panel and I can move it around and dock things together and, and do whatever I wanna do. So I'm gonna kinda go through this and talk about how I would design a, a workspace for me uh, and what works for me. Cause the default photography one that Adobe gives you is pretty good, but there are some little changes that I want to make along the way. So what I really like to have, I like to have my history panel and I like to have my layers panel. So I'm gonna separate my layers panel. And the way I do that is I actually take the word layers and I drag it out here to separate it out. I also want my paths panel and I want my channels panel. So I'm gonna drag those four out so that they're all individual separate panels. Now, I'm gonna skip over properties. So I'm actually gonna right click on properties and I'm gonna to go to close. Adjustments, I'm definitely gonna keep that. And I'm actually gonna leave, well, I'll pull it out here as well. Color, I don't really use that much, so I'm gonna right click on that and close it. And swatches, I never use either, so I'm gonna close that. And then over here on the right hand side as well, info, I'm gonna close that. I'm gonna close this, I'm gonna close everything else over here. So the only panels that I want out for right now are my history, layers, paths, channels, and adjustments. Now, again, your mileage may vary depending on what you are looking for in a given workspace. Now, for me, I like my layers panel to be pretty much the main thing that I see. That and adjustments are my two major things that I use in Photoshop. So I'm gonna take layers over here, drag it over this right hand side, and you can see if I, if I grab the little tab on top of it and I go all the way to the right, a little blue bar appears as if it's gonna dock it on the right hand side, which is what I want. So I'm gonna let go, and we can see just like that, boom, layers has gone in. Now I'm gonna spread this out a little bit, give myself some more working area. I like to nest my channels with layers as well. So I'm gonna check this out. If I grab that little tab on top and I drag right next to where the layers tab is, I can tab it in with layers. And I'm gonna do the same thing with paths because layers, channels, and paths to me are all very similar things. I use them for the same type of thing. It's just a different way of looking at uh, part of the image. So I'm gonna put those together. Now adjustments, I'm going to put that above these guys. So I'm gonna use my, drag the tab again, I'm gonna go up here and I'm going to wait till I get that little blue bar right across that other panel set. And if I let go, it puts it in above up there. History as well, I am going to nest up there with adjustments. And now I've got a really nice simple layout. Now timeline down here, I don't need this. So I'm gonna right click on that and close it. And now we've got something that I could work with. Now, there are a lot of other panels. For example, when you make an adjustment, like the curves adjustment, you can see that the properties panel pops up here because properties is where you go to actually work with your given adjustment. So let me make this a little smaller here so we can really see. So I might leave properties up here with adjustments so I can click between the two. Or what I sometimes like to do is take properties out and actually put it to the left of everything so that I can always see it regardless of what I happen to be doing. You could also do a lot of different other things. You could make this be a small little thumbnail button if you wanted to. I know a lot of photographers like to just put it out here in the open like this. You can also collapse it so it goes small like this view and you can hide it up there. There's a lot of different customization we can do. But the big thing is through a combination of dragging tabs, nesting things, moving things around, we can get a super nice workspace built in Photoshop. And for me, these are my main panels, my history, my adjustments, my properties, layers, channels, and paths. 
I can do most everything I need to in Photoshop with those separate panels there. And again, if you ever need anything else, you can very easily go up to Window and then pick whatever one it happens to be. For example, sometimes I work with type or text, so I would pull out the paragraph panel uh, or whatever panel I happen to need at the time. All right, now, when you get this all done, I like to go to Window and Workspace, and I like to say New Workspace so that I can save this, and I'm just gonna call this my favorite workspace, something like that. And you can see you can actually make keyboard shortcuts and your toolbar and your menus saved as well. So Photoshop has a lot of stuff up in the menus and the toolbar, and you can actually remove certain options if you want to streamline your workspace. Personally, I don't do that because there's too many random things that I sometimes need and I don't know I'm gonna need it till I need it. So hiding things just becomes more frustrating than anything else. I'm cool hiding panels because I can very easily go up to window and find all of them, all right? So I'm gonna hit save just like this. And now this workspace has been saved. And if I ever need it again, like say I mess all these things up and things go crazy and my history's floating around somewhere, I can just go up to window, workspace, and I can go to reset my favorite workspace, and that brings everything back to how I just designed it. So feel free to mess around with this. I think this is one of those things that's totally gonna be personal preference. Some photographers edit with multiple monitors and they'll put their panels on one monitor and their image on another. That's super cool too. Really, there's a lot of ways you can do it and all of them work equally well. So big thing, if you need anything, it's under the window menu. From there, think of the panels you commonly use, make sure they're up front and center. And if you don't use them all the time, feel free to hide them as much as you want to. If you guys like this video, I'd love you to hit that thumbs up button. If you disliked it, hit the dislike button. If you have a question, leave it in the comment section down below. Also, if you have a video that you think would be awesome if we made something about, leave that down in the comments as well. I love fresh ideas on different things you wanna learn in Lightroom, learn in Photoshop, whatever it happens to be. Lastly, if you love these videos that RMSP is producing, hit that subscribe button right down below and get subscribed to our channel. Thanks for watching.